Hey guys, welcome to the Improvement Podcast, where the mission is to help young men develop their character, identity, and mindset in order to activate their potential and achieve their goals in life. So on this episode, we have on another special guest. His name is Joey Chandler, and he is a purpose-based relationship coach. Thank you for coming to the show, Joey. Oh, thank you for having me. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to today's conversation. Yeah, no, it, was, it should be good. It's, uh, I love what you're doing, so I think, uh, I think we should have a good talk. Yeah, definitely. And so just to give uh, the listeners a little bit more background information about you, could you give them a little bit more details about what you do? Yeah, so I'm a, I'm a purpose coach. So ultimately, I help people figure out who they are and what they're about and so how they can be more of that in their life. And um, I basically, going through, I've been doing that for about five years. And what happened was, is this past year, I, my wife and I separated after almost 20 years. And in that process and in doing all the therapy and working out that I, I really kind of got back in touch that I actually really love helping people with relationships. Yeah, I, I did it a long time ago. And, and so I, uh, and it turns out that my purpose work is really helpful for relationships because these days there's so much chaos and so much uncertainty and so much, you know, everything, it, not, not just in dating, but just in life, but especially in dating these days that helping people get grounded in who they are and then taking the time to figure out what type of relationship that would really serve them and then finding a person that would uh, partner with them in terms of creating that relationship is, is proving very effective. And so that's what I do. Hey, that's great. And um, what would you say it was about your experience that led to you uh, focusing on the purpose aspect of it? Because one thing I'll say is that's a, definitely a unique approach compared to, I guess, what you might hear from a lot of dating coaches. Yeah, it, uh, it was a result of I was uh, doing uh, video training, actually, and mm -hmm. what this, not video training, but I was creating videos. Uh, these were videos where uh, I, they were tributes. And so I would I would get 30 or 40, like say we're doing video for your mom, we get 30 or 40 or 50 people all say what they love and appreciate about your mom. And they you know say mom's amazing and brilliant and beautiful and those sorts of things. And you Put, the, put all those together and we show it at a birthday party or an anniversary or, or something of the sort. And I did several hundred of those videos. And somewhere along the way, I started to see that there was always a theme in the video. The person was about love or joy or happiness or something. And it wasn't loud. It wasn't overt. But once I started to see it, I always saw it. And I did videos for people from seven to 90 all over the world. And it just landed on me that, wow, that thing that we, that, that, thing we have something at our core there's something that there and it's showing up in the conversations and how we interact with people uh, and it's not really obvious but because i spent so much time creating these videos i just started to see it and then i started reading books on knowing your purpose and knowing your why and i realized that that thing is our purpose it's who we are at our core and what we're here to do is to experience and to share that and then so then you take that into relationships if you think about it a relationship, ultimately what we want, what, you know, there's the fairy tales and all that kind of stuff, but ultimately what we want is we want a relationship where we can be ourselves and, and ourselves being the, you know, our best and our best self and also at our worst self. And we want a person or a partnership that allows for that to grow. And so it just dawned on me that the more that we can help people really get clear on who they are, the better off they're going to be at creating the relationship that works for them. Yeah, that's beautiful. And uh, just hearing you talk about the story of seeing just how much the people that were uh, getting these tributes, how much your friends love them or what they appreciated about them. And it's, I'm sure that was pretty fulfilling work. Yeah, that was amazing. That, that, that was, that changed, that changed my life. Cause that, what it showed me is that we all have something at our core. So no matter who, where I'm going or what, who I'm talking to arguments or not, you can, there's always something there at our core. And it also really helps in relationships because it, it shows that there's always a back and forth. Like I'm about people being free. That's, that's my purpose. And, and one of the things like I didn't do is like some things I, I didn't ask for how to create freedom in my own life. Like that's a big in relationships. It's a hard thing to do is to really stand up and say, Hey, I want this, or I need this. And also have a conversation where you're asking, what does the other person want? What do they need? And then working in such a way that allows for both people to get, as much as they want, as much as they can, you know, for each other, because no, but no relationship is perfect. There's going to be places where you struggle, but if you can help each other be, be get more of what you, what you want and what they want, then the, I think you just have a better chance of, of moving things forward and keeping the relationship alive and, and interesting. 
And that's understandable. And so I guess another question I have for you is once you got to the point where you started doing that, uh, that purpose work, I guess you could say, and starting to define what your, uh, what your values were and like what you're going to bring to the world. What were uh, some of the things that I guess, what was the process like for you and what did you come up with? In terms of the process being in terms of, of how I came up with my purpose or how I came up with the process to help people with their purpose. With your purpose, like what was your, I so guess, process? I'm about, I'm about people being free. That's my, that's my purpose. And what freedom means to me is uh, adventure and community and creativity and success uh, and being of service. That's what, mm-hmm. that's what freedom means to me. And so all of my work has some, you know, components of that, some, you know, some flavor of that. And there's places where I am that a lot and there's places where I'm not. The really nice thing about this is going through this divorce process. You know, what I, what we started to see is that both my wife and I, there were some things where we had settled for that we maybe we wanted, but we didn't have the courage to ask for earlier on in the relationship. And, and now I, I take full responsibility on that. But what it, it showed to me is that you, the more you can be in touch with yourself and then have the courage to ask for it, the, the better the chances are of you of being able to make it happen. And I think that's hard to ask for what you want in a relationship because you're afraid that the other person will say no or it won't work out. And, and that's scary to do, but to create a relationship that really works, that what needs to be, that's what needs to be done. Do you feel like a lot of men have an issue with asking for what they want? Do you think it's, something that's pretty even with both genders or would you say that uh, it's more so like with the men where they may not feel as comfortable asking for what they might need? I think it's pretty, it's pretty common. Like when I, I I work with people back and forth, I don't, I'm not, I'm not like a male relationship coach or a women's relationship coach. Mm -hmm. And I find that people will not ask for what they want in different ways. It's, there's very, very few across the board, but oftentimes what it is is people want to help other people out and we want to be nice and we want to um, treat people well. And so to ask for what we want in a way that lands for them is hard. We don't have a lot of training with it. The mm-hmm. fact is, is that we all have far more experience being who we think we should be rather than who we actually are. And so what we have to do is actually practice being ourselves. And and that's why I coach all my people to like share, you know, share their purpose and talk to their purpose. I just have one client who she's getting back into dating after five or six years. And we were talking about her purpose and and she figured it out and she actually ended up going to talk to her mom about it. And it opened up this whole relationship around her mom. And now she's bringing that experience into the dating world. Just gives her more confidence. And so we have to practice being ourselves so that we can ask for what, not only ask for it, but identify what we really want to really say, you know, you know what, I want to be able to do this and, and, or I don't want to do that. And to be able to say that in a way that you can have a, a conversation with a partner is challenging. And we just don't have a lot of experience with it. Hmm. So it sounds like authenticity is really a big problem. Okay. I, I, it's, I don't know if it's authenticity per se. It, um, it's, it's just, it's courage. It's being willing to, to say, Hey, you know what? I really need this. And it's being willing to risk the fact that the person may walk away. I think that that happened with my wife and I, we, we were afraid that if we asked for what we want, the person would walk away. And, and that over time, and, and we didn't have any major problems, but over time it got in the way of our, of our relationship. So being able to encourage them to say, hey, I need this, or I would like this. Can we, can we figure out a way to make that happen? Is, is, uh, it's a great, it's a great um, tool to have. That is, that is so interesting to me. Like after you broke it down like that, it just kind of started making me, making me think. And correct me if I'm wrong, but at least this is the way that I interpreted what you had to say. So when you say that people feel like if they communicated what it is, they, they actually want it the people around them would leave. Would you say that a lot of people think that they're unlovable or do you think like as themselves, or do you think that uh, some people feel like the things that they want are unreasonable too much to ask? Do they feel like it's not common that someone would actually be able to give them what they need? So they feel like they need to settle. Do you kind of see what I'm getting? Like, what do you think is the underlying like motive or I guess maybe thought process behind that? Why people might do that? 
Yeah. Well, the underlying thought process is that somewhere along the line, we started being something that we're not. Mm-hmm. And so we, we pretend like, you know, I have to be funny or I have to be cute or I have to um, act a certain way. I was watching, uh, if you ever watched the show, uh, Love is Blind, have you seen that, <laughs> that show? I've heard of it. Yeah. Yeah. So, but it's very interesting. There's this one character on there, uh, this, this woman, um, uh, Jessica, and she's on TV, so I think I can say her name. Uh, but if you look at her character in the first season, her voice was different. She would talk to guys in one voice and talk to the camera in a different voice. And, and so she's somewhere along the line, she determined that this other voice was what she needed to do around guys. And, and, and it was a totally different voice. And, um, and it just, and it, so the question is, who is she? You know, who is Je- mm-hmm. and that, who is Jessica? And, and, you know, I, I, you know, that's up for her to say, but because we have these, we often live these different lives and, and, and we, um, uh, we have to act, we feel like we have to act in a certain way. We lose confidence in, in being ourselves. And so there's a question of one, who am I? And then, then once I figure out who am I like, well, what type of relationship do I actually want? And I, I don't even know how to ask for that because I don't even know who I am. So it's this whole combination of things. I don't think it's just one sense of like, I'm unlovable. I think it's kind of a combination of things. And then of course, there's all the societal issues. Um, you know, p- certain people have to act certain ways in business and life and sorts of things. And so it brings in all, you know, there's just a lots of layers that get in the way of us being our full selves. Oh, okay. Okay. So when you explain it like that, it makes sense. And yeah, the word that always just keeps popping into my head whenever like you're breaking it down is that authenticity portion. and when you brought up the things about like societal standards and the way you have to conduct yourself, like in your daily life, I can see why it would be a problem because I don't, I don't think it's something that's as easy to turn on and off as people think, you know, if you go to your corporate job, you know, every, uh, you know, Monday through Friday from nine to five, right. And you have to put on a face or, you know, act a certain way in that environment. Let's say you go to church, you act a certain way in that environment, you go hang out with your friends, You know, there's a certain role that you feel there. If that person that you're supposed to be isn't consistent in all aspects of your life, I can definitely say that could create some confusion. And then maybe like, yeah, getting home and being around your wife and all that, this identity, the social identity, I guess you could say that you've built may not actually align with the needs that you might need at home where you're supposed to be your most authentic. At least that's what I'm gathering from it, from what you said. And I can see how that could create a, uh, a huge problem for a lot of people. It really kind of, uh, one of the things i noticed, like with a lot of dating content, you could say, you know, mainly like the stuff geared towards like young men is that it's not really, you could say identity focused. It's always about, okay, change yourself into, you know, behaving in a certain way or doing this certain thing to give yourself the best results possible doing this or doing that. But really the mindset you could say that I've kind of taken with, I guess that aspect, like if you want to get into the dating stuff is really just to try and develop into the best version of you instead of trying to, let's say, you know, change yourself, you know, and kind of craft your identity or pretend, or like, you know, maybe say phrases or things in a way that can help you to get a certain result. I think really the best thing is just to work with what your, your base is, I guess you could say your foundation and just improve on those things and make them strong. So that way, whenever you do attract somebody, it's somebody that's actually attracted to the authentic you and not this facade that you put on because there was another guy that I interviewed maybe about a month or so back. And we had talked about this um, off camera and yeah, he said, Hey, you guys can, you know, do all this stuff, all they want, you know, do like the, let's say techniques or like do like the, the texting games or whatever else. But he said at the end of the day, let's say that woman does fall in love with you. Best case scenario, she'll never love the actual you, she's always going to be in love with the facade. And then whenever she finds out that that man that she fell in love with actually doesn't exist, she's going to leave you. And that really, that really stuck with me. And it just like further cemented that, that idea, I guess you could say of just being the better authentic version of you. Yeah. It's exhausting trying to be somebody you're not, it's just simply exhausting. And that, and I I think that's a huge impact on relationships. You know, if there's a spouse who works, at, outside of the home and in an office and they're they're being one way and then they come home of course they're exhausted of course they're tired and of course they're you know they're going to act a certain way and and like you said if you're 
and, and I think this is really huge now because again, there's so much stress. You can pretend to be something you're not in a, a world where there's not a lot of stress or it's just much easier to do that. But in a world where there's so much stress and there's so much um, awareness around people playing games and, and all this kind of stuff, like you just, you just don't have the time or the energy to, and, and the fact is you're not very good. Most of us are not very good liars. Mm-hmm. Like most of us know, like when someone's lying to us, we generally know, or we have a decent idea, yet we try to lie to other people about, you know, how busy we are or whatever that is. And, and we know. And so it, I think just working on being, like you said, being yourself, growing who you are, I call it building up your purpose muscles, being more of yourself is going to give you the best chance of creating a relationship that really works, identifying the relationship that you want to create and finding a person to create that relationship with, and then actually doing that over time. That aligns with your purpose. Okay. And so let's hop into that. So let's, let's make that connection for the listeners between purpose and uh, your relationships. And so first things first, let's talk about purpose, because I feel like that's something that a lot of young guys struggle with, you know, myself included. It took a while before I could really start to move towards what I thought my purpose was to try and pursue it. And then from there, I guess you can really gear the type of people that are going to be in your life and how they fit into it. But yeah, let's talk about some of your work when it comes to uh, finding purpose and everything. I don't know where you'd like to start, whether it's like the process or maybe the the science behind it, the steps. Well, the the first thing to do, purpose is one of these words that get used in a lot of different ways. And ultimately Mm -hmm. purpose is an intention for something. And and so you want to talk to people about what they mean by purpose. And so for me, the way I define purpose, it's you have something at your core, like I'm about freedom and you're about joy because you did the, the work that I do. And our purpose, why we are here is to experience that thing ourselves and to share it with other people. And our jobs, our relationships, our activities, our efforts are all reflections of and manifestations of our purpose. But those jobs are not our purpose. This podcast is a reflection of you wanting to experience and create joy for people. You know, we could go through all of that and and see how, Mm -hmm. you know, it brings up joy for you and for other people. At least that's your intention. Now there's, I'm sure there's places where you're really good at it and some places where you, where you struggle. And, and so it's not, um, it's, it's not an activity. And the reason for this is actually because of the videos that I did, because I did videos for people that were seven, 12, 15 years old, and there was always a theme in it. And, and this was, and I did videos for people who were 90, who were no longer doing their, you know, whatever job that they had. And so it was never mission-based or it was never job-based. It was always like who they were. And so I say our purpose, like why we're here is to experience something and to share it. And the reason I say that is because obviously you want to be able to experience it because that's who you are, but you can't really fully experience something if you're not sharing it. And you can't really share something if you're not experiencing. So it goes back and forth. And so, and again, this is, this, then this goes back to relationships. Your, you know, the relationship that I'm working on creating is a relationship where I could get to experience a sense of my sense of freedom and my partner, she will experience a sense of freedom and whatever that means to her. Mm-hmm. And so what needs to be done as we start to have, as I move forward with someone is to talk to her about, you know, say like, Hey, this is what freedom means to me. What does freedom mean to you? And to start to have explore what that means to her. And then we can start to see and, and what does freedom mean in, in terms of finances and family and sex and travel and, and all of those things and just start to explore that. Now she has her own purpose. She'll have, you know, maybe joy, or love or happiness or something. And so it, ideally she can do this work as well. And then we can start to talk, talk about like the relationship that would be a reflection of her. And again, what we're looking to create is there, where there's some overlap where not, no relationship is always going to be 100% perfect. But if you can get enough overlap where you can really support each other and being more of yourself, I think you can create the foundation for lo- a long-term relationship. That's great. I'm glad that you broke it down that way. And uh, so I guess to give some advice to the listeners, for the ones that don't have any idea what they want to do, you know, we talked about when, you, when I did the assessment, how joy was the thing that came up. And you talked about uh, freedom is the thing that came up for you. Uh, what would you recommend that the listeners do if they'd like to figure out their purpose, whether it's like through your process or just if they do it naturally? 
Yeah, I, I think you can go to my website, uh, joeychandler.net, and there's a, there'll be assessment there that you can, you can do for free. And it will get you started. And the, the main idea here is we're starting to explore what who you really are as a person and then what that actually means to you. Because again, most of our experiences, like what most of us know about relationships and sex is stuff we learned in movies and TV shows and fairy tales and, and all of this stuff. It's not real life. Mm -hmm. And, and so we want to sit down and say, okay, what does this really mean to me? And what does, and and explore that. And the more that you can explore that you can do that through journaling is, you know, you can write about like for you, you can write about like what joy actually means to you and really start to explore that. You can ask people like what joy means to them, because no matter how much we know about our purpose, it's still based on our own personal perspective. And by talking to other people about what you know our purpose what that means to them that's going to give new insight to us we're going to learn learn from them and expand our awareness we're also going to form a connection with that person and and then you can start to think okay what kind of relationship what kind of job what kind of family life do i would would really joy be like what would it look like to have joy in a family you know that would that's an interesting conversation you just start to explore it And the more that you explore it, the more that is part of your life, the more that you can take actions that are aligned with it. All right. Keep moving forward. I say there's three, generally speaking, three main steps in a relationship that works is first to clarify who you are, what you're about, what you want to create. And then you want to strengthen your ability to be yourself so that you can be more of yourself in more places in your life. And then you create that relationship by connecting with someone who's aligned with that relationship and and then growing it. All right. I like it. And um, so after you, I guess, after going through that process, after you kind of define the type of life that you want to lead and what would come with that, you know, having that freedom or that joy and all these aspects and how you go about it, I feel like you kind of, you most likely would have like a switch in, in mindset when it comes to dating. Right. And this is something that we kind of touched on before we were first meeting where a lot of guys tend to feel like they might need to sell themselves, you know, as a potential partner in a relationship. And I would think that once you get purpose driven, it's not okay. Let me sell myself to see if I fit into, you know, her life, right? Let's see if, you know, this is a person that aligns with my purpose that I could potentially have a relationship with, right? I think that was kind of the angle that you took. Let's talk about that a little bit. Actually, there's there's actually a middle step. There's actually the the relationship that will allow you to fulfill on your purpose. Mm -hmm. And that's what, and that's actually what you're selling. You're you're selling a, like, you're like, this is my vision for relationship. This is what I think would, would allow me to, to be able to experience, you know, the fullest potential of myself. This is what I want to create. Is that interesting to you, you know, potential um, date. And then that way you're, you're not, you're not looking at each other per se. I mean, yes, you're obviously you're looking at each other. You're, you know, you're checking each other out. You make sure you, you, you want people to, you know, there's that physical attraction hundred percent. Yeah. Definitely need that. Right. Yeah. You need that. That's, that's there. But ultimately at some point you want to create, like, what is, what is it that future that you're living into? What is it that you want to create? And the more clear that you are on who you are, this is where it gets back to being able to stand up for what you really want and what's really important to you. And, and so you're, you're just more likely to say what you need if it's if it's not necessarily just between the two of you. If really you're talking about this third entity, which is called the relationship. Uh, okay, I see, I see. And yeah, you touched on the uh, the physical aspect of it. That's definitely something that's important. I would say, especially for for guys, because at the end of the day, if you're not attracted to them, it definitely does make it hard. I would say to one even have like incentive to go approach them, right, and even like consider them like for a potential relationship. Yeah. I, yes. You, you do need to have that. And there's, there's no, there's no, um, I don't know any way to, to figure out how to make that better or not. Like you just, you know, you gotta, you gotta choose, but I will say sometimes, uh, and I've done this is, is you, you skip over potential relationships and you didn't really understand how good a fit they were because of their look, you know, you, you pushed off their looks for whatever reason. Mm-hmm. And I'm not saying to ignore the physical side, but someone who's a really good match for you in terms of your, the relationship that you want to create, that is really sexy. That has a sexiness in its own level. That's, you know, beyond uh, that's different than looks. And again, not saying to ignore the looks, but 
definitely, you know, make sure that if, if someone really wants to create that same relationship, that's a powerful thing. And I always say that probably comes from, from maturity, you know, just from being more experienced, because I would say as a young guy, you know, I would say the, the physical portion of it is definitely a, uh, a big part, you know, like yeah. when I go around and like, let's say I go talk to women, I go approach somebody. That's definitely the main thing. And one thing I'll say is like, if I happen to be around a woman that I'm not necessarily attracted to, there's not really a lot of it, a lot of excitement, I guess you could say, to get to know that person or to, uh, you know, even potentially see if there's any type of chemistry. There's not really a whole lot of incentive, at least, I guess you could say, just speaking for myself. So when you express it like that, I guess that probably does come from just being out there more and having more experience. I mean, it's a hundred percent. Yes. Like I, again, I'm not saying you, you, you're going to, you know, go after someone who you just not attracted to like, that's, right. that's just not, that's, that's, uh, I'm not saying that at all, but there is, there is a, there's a range of people who you are attracted to. And there's some people maybe on that cusp. And so there's someone who, again, who's on that cusp and really fits the, I'll say this. You want to say no to someone for really good reasons. You know, if you're like, look, I, I'm not attracted to you, or I'm sort of attracted to you, but you don't fit the relationship that I want to create. That, that's an easy way to, that's a powerful way to say no. If you're just saying no, because I don't like the way you look, you just don't have that much depth in, in terms of why you're doing what you're doing. Mm-hmm. And, and the more that you can say, yeah, you know, she's amazing. She's beautiful. She does all these activities and whatever that is. And, and she's also aligned with the relationship that I want to create. I think this purpose work and knowing your purpose does this throughout any aspect of your life is that it allows you to say yes to things that you want to say yes to and no to things that you want to say no to just more powerfully. Gotcha. And, and, th- and that's really what we're talking about. It's really like, look, what do you want to create? And sometimes those doubts and those fears and those worries are like, oh, she, you know, maybe she won't like me or I won't like her or whatever it is. But you're like, no, I want to create this relationship and this person for whatever reason you you've come to believe that she's she's into that Mm -hmm. that's 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 interesting again not saying blow off looks but it is interesting to consider that if this person can create that relationship with you that has a sex appeal that can last over time that is worth at least giving a second chance to at least considering all right all right and uh something else that i noticed in uh the stuff that you do in your work is that with the purpose, there are also like certain values, or I guess you, you call them pillars that yeah. are aligned with that. And I would imagine those are the criteria that you kind of measure the potential partner on to kind of see how they fit into your life or your purpose. So let's, uh, let's talk about the values portion of that. Yeah. Uh, could you kind of describe the role that the values play in your overall purpose? Yeah. So what, what I found in working with people, and I've, and I've done this exercise now with you know, a few thousand people, is that there are five main purposes is essentially love, joy, happiness, excitement, and freedom. Mm -hmm. And not, not everybody's in that, but those are kind of like the five big ones. And, uh, and, but those are big, broad words, obviously love and joy. Those, those all mean vastly different things to different people. So I went through and I created what I call pillars and basically people choose what, you know, for your case, what joy means to you. And for my case, what freedom means to me. And that is where we start to, um, uh, customize essentially these purposes for, for each person and to really uh, fine tune them and what they mean to us. So for like me, it's, you know, it's adventure and creativity and connection and being of service and success. And what you can do is you can start to say, when you talk to someone, you can say, you know, Hey, you know what, I'm, I did this work and I, I, I'm a coach and I'm this, and I'm that, but ultimately I'm about people being free. And what freedom means to me is uh, adventure, like, you know, those things I said, and you can have that conversation. You can say, what does freedom mean to you? And you can, it just gives you a way to explore different things. And then another really powerful tool with these things is that on days like where you're not experiencing joy, you know, I'm sure there's days when you wake up, when you, when you don't have a lot of joy, you can actually go to your pillars and, I'll, and you can ask which one of these would help right now. So for you, you said joy is about empathy and, or do you mind if I share this? Yeah, go ahead. You can, you can yeah, share them. Say, yeah. Yeah. Uh, you said that joy is about empathy and integrity and self-mastery and, and devotion and accountability. And, and, um, you know, the one question I had is there is joy also about fun for you? Oh, I mean, yeah, definitely. Fun is like a big portion of it. But I guess when it comes to like the things that got my life, 
those are more so like the things that I live by and try and gear my actions through. I definitely like to have fun. Like I'm having yeah, fun doing the it's podcast like, it's, stuff. It's like, yeah, and this is where you see your smile. Right. Like this, like this is where I know that your purpose to me is who you are, your core. And so when your, your core comes out, you smile. Mm-hmm. So if we were doing a little more coaching together, I would, I would invite you to replace one of these things like mm-hmm. integrity and accountability are sort of similar. Right. I would right. Replace one of those with fun it just gives you a broader sense of, of who you are. Cause there, there's yes. Accountability is important to you, but you also like to have fun. Yeah. I get what you're saying. You get what I'm saying? So, and, and what you can do is when you have a good broad range of things that, that reflect who you are, then you can wake up in the morning and say, okay, which one of these things would really help me today? You know, do I need to bring more empathy? Would empathy help or would integrity help or accountability or fun? Would that help me move myself forward? I was actually in a funk the other last week and I was going through my things and, and I was like, okay, I can remind myself of success. And I went through and I actually started to map out all the different tools that I have created for the, the program that I have. And it just, and I, I, I was like, wow, I created more than like maybe 15 or 16, you know, like a whole series of tools that people can use to create a relationship that works. And it just reminded me, I'm like, wow, I got something to offer. And it got me going, you know, it got, it gave me that little kickstart. So by getting present to getting clear on who you are and then asking yourself, you know, what, what can I bring today? What more of me can I bring today? It's just going to help you keep moving forward. So I like that you brought that up actually, because, um, I never considered that when it came to my values, every time, like you hear values of like an organization or something like that, it's always like, so like serious and straightforward, but I never did consider adding, adding something like fun to it. Something that, uh, you know, could be a little bit more flexible, I guess you could say, because one of the things that I value a lot, I'm trying to think of like a single word I could, I could use to describe it, but I mean, like I really like to be, in situations or like have opportunities where like when I'm interacting with people, you know, I'm present and in the moment and I'm having so much fun and I'm enjoying it so much that I'm not thinking yeah. about anything else that's, that's going on, I guess you could say. And so that's one of the things that I really look for a lot when it comes to hanging out with friends and, and people. Yeah. And, and this is where it just, I, the, I encourage you just to go with the gut. It's fun. Like fun is a powerful thing. Like and a lot of people are like, oh, that's too simple. I'm like, no, no, no. When you take fun seriously, like is a powerful tool. Like, and the idea is not that you have fun, like lolly da fun, like in, anywhere, everywhere, you know, every day you're just like, you know, ignoring the realities. Like, no, inside of this challenge, how can we create some fun? Inside of COVID, how can we create some fun? Inside of a, a relationship that's struggling, how can we bring some fun back? And, and it's a powerful tool. And the more that you explore it, the more you understand where it shows up in your life. How can it, you start to build, you start to see that fun is, is not, it, fun is not a simple word. We treat it simply. We think it's just, this doesn't mean anything, but no, it can be a very powerful word if it's authentic to you. And the reason I think it's authentic to you is because you smiled. Mm-hmm. Like when you said present, like you, you got very serious. And for people that are on the podcast, you know, we're, we're looking at each other right. and you got serious and, 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 and it's, it's this is what happens. We treat our purpose like really serious rather than the sense of like who we actually are. And who we are is a whole range of things going from integrity and empathy to fun and to joy. You know, like joy means a range of things, not just what we think it. it and this is where much purpose work is about what you are out to accomplish. And your purpose is who you are at your core. And who you are at your core, I'm going to guess is some sort of there's fun is part of who you are okay okay yeah it's something really interesting to think about yeah i guess fun could be a value that's added then it it could yeah and again i'm not saying that because it should be i'm just saying that's just in working with people that that in looking at you and talking with you that's my experience and so you can choose any word you want but Mm -hmm. i think it there's something like that it's fun play something like that I appreciate the input. I guess, I guess I got some casual coaching just now. Should I pay you for that? <laughs> <laughs> well, you go out and have fun. And yeah. I mean, like think about it. So then here's the fun part is like, you can start to think of like, you know, going on a date. How can I create some fun in the date? Where would mm-hmm. I have some fun? And, and you can go, you know, and that would add, that would lead you down the road of a different answer than how can I have some integrity in this date? Again, not, not better or worse, just leads you down a different path. Ah, uh, okay. I see. I see. 
All right. All right. Well, um, one question I had for you is, you know, we talked about the purpose portion of it and everything and how that helps with relationships. I know that's your main focus, but um, what would you say is another issue that another very common issue that a lot of, let's say, maybe guys run into in their relationships? I, I think that just the biggest thing is that we just don't know. Who, uh, again, this is it's, it's based on purpose. We just don't know what we want. And we don't have right now, we just don't have enough people asking each other what we really want. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of people pretending out there like this is this is what I want. So you're, you're faking it, which is leading to a lot of people um, being unwilling to commit. I mean, I think that I think a big issue is around commitment and people being able to say, hey, I want to commit to this person because we're afraid of whatever reason or commit to the wrong person or not. And I can just say, you know, after being married for 20 years, it's the relationships are tough. You know, they take work, and it's the commitment. It's inside the commitment when you really find yourself, when you really find and create that relationship. And the interesting part is that every level of new new level commitment is going to bring up new issues. Like you can plan all you want of what it's like to to be uh, say like even go from just dating to you know going you know being steady or exclusive however you want to describe that and then uh, and then moving in together or moving into or getting engaged or getting engaged to marriage or marriage to kids every one of those new levels of commitment is going to raise new issues and you're going to have you have fights and arguments about things that you never ever imagined you thought you had it all figured out you planned everything for those kids and they're you're having arguments about stuff that you you never knew and so I guess in that is the, being the willingness to commit is really important, but then also the willingness to grow and just to know that le- we're always growing and to have a, a system, a process in, in your life to say, okay, how can I grow in this situation? Because if you're trying to stay the same, you're, you're going to get stuck. You're going to end up resenting yourself or other people because it, growth is so important because you're, you know, through a relationship, you're always growing. And that's why actually I, I call my program the partnership loop more than a relationship, because to me, a partnership is about creating something. And, and I think a, a couple, you're creating a life together. You're building mm-hmm. a life together. And if you're both not on the same page in terms of like growing with each other, you're going to end up with some, um, you know, you're going to end up with some problems down the road. I honestly think that goes back to something that you said before. And it was about how people don't really have realistic expectations of what a relationship is. I think you mentioned like the Hollywood or like the TV stuff. And it really makes me think that a lot of people get into a relationship and think that the perfect partner for them uh, is just going to be a cakewalk, you could say, to where, you know, no one has to do any growth. No one has to like change or compromise. I feel like people think that if the relationship isn't just easy every day, if the, um, they think if the relationship challenges them in any sort of way, that person might not be the right person for them or there's always something better. And then another thing that kind of goes in that too is just how easy it is to, to separate and start over. It seems as though people kind of view marriage and just relationships as pretty like transactional. And it also seems like they don't really look at the person they're with and see something unique in them that makes them worth fully committing to and trying to make things work no matter what. And that's why I think it's, it's so important to look at the relationship that you want to create. Because if you can find a person who's really interested in your relationship and, 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 you, and you get that they understand what you're trying to create and, and there's this good, you're clear that they're going to get value out of it and you're working on this together, that person is pretty rare. It's, it's like find, you know, founding a company, finding a great founder, a co-founder it is a hard, challenging thing. And any, you talk to any co-founder, they'll tell you that, that finding that partnership, there's way more partnerships that have failed than have succeeded. Mm. And so finding that person who's interested in aligned with creating what you want to create and you're aligned with creating what they want to create, it just, to me, it gives you more pause. It gives you more, more reason to one, commit and stay committed and to continue that growth process to keep moving forward. I think that's a great way to put it. And it's honestly tough to have that patience because, you know, being young, I guess you could say, even with my own, like looking for like a, a potential partner, you know, you, you want it to happen as soon as possible. But the thing is 
finding someone that's going to be a good match for you, someone that's going to be a, a strong fit, someone you can actually work and build with, is going to be something that takes time and something that you definitely don't want to do, at least from what I've seen and like the people around me, is just settle for somebody you know, that doesn't meet at least like your, what your basic criteria should be. I'll say, cause most people don't really have good basic criteria, but um, settling ends up just hurting you more in the long run. Let's see, like if you have kids with the wrong person or, uh, you know, spend prime years of your life, you know, where you're supposed to be building kind of this company, like what you're saying, but you've been building with the wrong co-founder, someone that wants to go in a completely different direction. And then what exactly is that company then at the end of it? If, you know, the two leads of it, or moving in the same direction didn't have the same goals, right? You compare it to like, you know, I guess make a business analogy to it like you were using before. That company would would absolutely fail. They wouldn't make any money. They'd be in the red. Yeah. It's and, and this is where I think uh the way to to expedite that is actually by getting more clear on what you want. The more clear on what you want and what you're about. Someone comes to you and says, "Hey, I want to, I want to date you, or I want, you know, want to go out with you, or whatever they want to do with you." If you're pretty clear what you want, it's you, it's much easier to have a conversation, and you're just again able to say no, much much faster, or say yes, much 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 faster, because you're clear on what you want. Gotcha. And so, one question I have for you is, what advice would you give to guys when it comes to, uh, you could say, presenting their purpose? So once they go through that process and they know what it is, they know what exactly it is they're looking for, what advice would you give them, you know, as far as communicating that to make sure that the right person uh, comes along and fits into it? Yeah, practice. Purpose takes practice. And what you do is you go out and you practice sharing your purpose with people, what I call their safe people, your friends, your family, uh, maybe it's a coworker that you'd be like, Hey, I just did this thing. And I figured out that my, I'm about this. And, and you can have start to have conversations. The more that you can have conversations about your purpose in the quote, safe areas of your life, the more able, you're just going to be able to have your purpose just flow out, out of you when you're under pressure. I like to say that you should know your purpose so well that you can share it over drinks with friends. And because if you can do that, then you can have a, make it conversational when you're on a date, when you're maybe in a job interview, maybe you're talking to investors, you know, whatever it is. And at some point, all those people are going to say, well, you know, tell me about yourself. And I think you want to be able to say, you know, well, I'm a, I, I'm a coach. I'm a, for me, I'm a dad. I love skiing, but ultimately I'm about people being free. And what freedom means to me is adventure and connection and creativity and being of service and success. That's what freedom means to me. And then here's how you do it. You say, hey, and out of curiosity, what does freedom mean to you? And that, and that person starts talking and, and then she'll have, or he or she, whoever you're talking to will have that conversation will go in a totally different way than they expected. It'll be interesting and you'll have a real true authentic connection and you'll be able to see if that's a person or a place that you want to be with or, you know, partner with. Hey, thank you for that. And so that pretty much wraps up everything that I have for you, but um, something, something new that I think I might want to try uh, to ask everybody just across the board at the end of an interview is uh, what would you say is the best piece of advice that you've ever received? The best piece, you know, I didn't, I definitely did not take this, but my mom said to follow your passion, like follow what you're really passionate about. And in retrospect, because I said, no, 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 you can't do that. You got to go get a job. Like and it was crazy mm -hmm. that I, I said that. Um, yeah, yeah, crazy I, that you said that to your mom and it wasn't the other mom, way around, like, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, but I will say this is, is the, the, the thing where my mom didn't, couldn't help me with is, is yes, follow your passions, but start to recognize the fears and the doubts that get in the way of you following those passions. So you can let those go and then keep following your passions. Because at some point in line, those fears and doubts are going to get in your way if you don't have a good process for identifying and letting them go. And so, yes, follow your passions, keep following those. But just recognize those doubts and fears that come up. All right, then. Thank you for that. Well, for the people that want to uh, find you and get some more information about you or try out some of your stuff, uh, where would you recommend that they go? Yeah, everything's at joeychandler.net. And that's where you can start to you can do surveys. You can look at my uh, I have online programs and, and, and one on one coaching. 
And really, I, I'm looking for people to connect with people that want to create a great relationship. They're tired of playing games. They want to be able to feel like they can be themselves, and not just in dating, but throughout their life. And, it, and we have this whole system called the partnership loop that will help people basically go from not really knowing who they are to be able to create a relationship that reflects and serves who they are. All right, then. Well, hey, thanks again, Joey, for coming on to the show. I really appreciate you coming on talking to my to my people and offering a lot of value. I think this was a pretty solid interview and I think there are a lot of takeaways from this. Awesome, man. Thank you. Really appreciate it. All right, then take care.